So, Trailblazer Reloaded has been out for about four to five days now, and uh, I've been streaming most of my progress over on my Twitch alongside my good friend, Mr. Gregory07, so check him out if you have the time. And we're pretty much just trying to rush towards the end game, but through this, I've specifically been getting questions about the method we're using to get Soul Wars Zeal. So I'm just pretty much here to make a quick guide on how you can make the most zeal per hour by doing it. So this method is definitely one of the best for people who want to stack up experience, pure essence, bolts, runes, and, you know, other things. So I think it's definitely worth learning as, you know, for instance, less than an hour of this every day can net you up to a million XP in like a combat skill like prayer, which is pretty annoying to level can be made fairly easy. And yeah, it's, it's, there's minimal effort. It, it's not nearly as annoying to do as the mass world. So I definitely recommend you learn this sort of method. If even, it even translates to the main game. So if you want to do that in the main game, don't have to be trailblazer, go for it. Cause it, it does work in the main game. So getting into it, a uh, quick background. Soul Wars is a team-based game requiring a minimum total level of 500 and a combat level of 40. In it, two teams fight each other to control outposts and kill the enemy's avatar. And if you're victorious, you win zeal, which you can use to pretty much trade in for crates. They're called Spoils of War, and these have all the items I previously mentioned, and they can you know, really stack up your account with items that might be harder to get, depending on the regions you've chosen in this league. There's a lot more to the minigame than just a team-based game, you know. But to be honest... The method I'm about to show you doesn't actually play the game properly, so anything I tell you about playing it normally just wouldn't help. Alright, now that you've got a background, let's get into the method. I'll try and put it as simply as possible and sort of step by step. So, first of all, it's a duo method, so you just need you and one other friend. You can use an alt account, but it's a bit more click intense and you have to be worrying about AFK logging, but it does work and you will get more points if you're not trading wins. And I do have to mention, it's strictly a duo method. So I'm sorry to your other mate who wants to join in, but they're going to have to either wait or find someone else because if they do join you, you're going to lose a lot of efficiency. And in terms of gear, bring the best combat gear you have and a weapon that can kill a player at a sort of long range. So a crossbow and long range or a crystal bow, something like that, or magic. Uh, you can't bring a cape into the minigame, so leave that in the bank. And if you have access to law runes in your area, then bring those as well as air runes so you can use telegrab. It's a time save, but it's not really the most impactful, so don't worry if you don't have them. I know I didn't have them and it didn't really make a difference. Now, you want you and your friend to both join separate friends chat channels, so that's in the bottom left, the little yellow happy faces. You join your own friends chat channel. And you want to enter the mini game through the purple gate to the southeast in the lobby. Once you're inside, just right click and challenge your friend and accept it and you'll begin the game. Now, in this method, you're each going to play different roles. There's going to be the booster who will be the one who leaves the game at the end. He doesn't get any points. And the leech is the one who remains in the game. And he does pretty much the minimum amount of work required to receive points when the booster leaves. This means that pretty much only one of you will get points per game. So if you both need them, then you're going to have to swap roles between you. So it is worth learning both roles. But to be honest, like even if you're swapping roles, it does half the efficiency technically, because obviously you're swapping and one side doesn't get points. But I am pretty sure that this is still faster than just doing mass world. So still worth learning. Okay, so when you spawn, both of your starts, the initial start will be exactly the same. So what you want to do is you want to spawn in, grab some potions. These are pretty much, they do everything. They restore your prayer, they boost your stats. So you grab those, grab like one or two of them, run towards the center of the arena. And once you get to the little island in the middle of the water, you want to turn around that and uh, sort of circumvent it until you arrive at this little graveyard area with ghosts. They should be about level 70, so... You might see some lower level ghosts as you run past, but ignore those. You want to kill the level 70 ones, and they're right in the middle of the map. They drop four essence when they die, and you and your partner are going to need to collect 40 total. So that's not individual. You want to get 40 essence total. 
And usually this means you're both going to collect 20 essence. But if one of you has less DPS, maybe they kill the ghost slower, then just communicate and the one who has more DPS can maybe kill one more ghost and the lower DPS can kill one less, etc. But yeah, 40 essence total. So once you have this essence, this is when you start to do different tasks and I'm going to run through each of them individually. Now first up is the leech. He's the one who gains points and he needs to actually do the most work. So once he's collected his essence, which is the thing that both of you do, he in particular has to run to the island in the centre. So he crosses over the bridge and he stands in the centre and he wants to be inside the boundary of the capture point. And there'll be an obelisk there, and it's pretty obvious where the boundary of the capture point is. I've tile marked them on my screen if you can see them there. But yeah, stay in there and just kill the booster. And he can do this in two ways. He can either kill with him with range across the water, which is why he brought the range weapons. And if you're going to do this, you need telegrab. So you're going to kill your partner and then telegrab the essence he drops because you get the essence that he has gathered. If you don't have telegrab, it's not an issue. It's not really a big time loss. Just have your partner run around and make sure he doesn't enter the boundary. But you can kill him from inside the boundary, pick up his essence, and then continue on. So once you've been inside the boundary long enough and you've got the essence, uh, your obelisk should turn the same color as your team. And your team is just the cape you've got on the back, so blue or red. So once your obelisk has changed color, then you want to click on it and uh, put in the essence you should have two remaining if you picked up 40 because 38 is the max and once you've done this you should see avatar strength should go to zero percent and that's how you know you've done it right so once that's all done run to your enemy side so you want to run to the enemy spawn and you literally just kill the avatar until it's under 1200 health and that's 79 percent if you're looking on the sidebar so once that's done, the boost is going to leave the game and he will pretty much end the game for you and you'll be awarded zeal for doing the most damage to the avatar. So the booster, he doesn't really do much after the collecting the essence. So all he needs to do is run close to the water to be killed from a range and get his essence telegrabbed or just run inside of the, uh, the sort of central area where the obelisk is, making sure to stay outside of the boundary. For, uh, otherwise he's going to capture it and that leads to a lot of issues once he's killed and respawns literally all he has to do is wait for the leech to finish damaging his avatar to under 1200 health remember 79 percent. so when you see 79 percent, you want to leave through the portal and that's it that's all you need to do you won't get points but your leech will and that's pretty much the role one thing i do have to mention though is once you've died you can't sit afk otherwise you will be kicked so Try and stay active, be that by drinking potions, which is what I do, or if you want to be a little efficient, you can run out to the ghosts, kill them for a little bit of XP, and then once the avatar gets low, you can sort of run back and end the game then. And that's it. Uh, that's all you need to do. That's literally all you need to do. Uh, each game that me and uh, Greg and some of my other friends have done, they've lasted around three to four minutes, which is about average. And for me, at five times, points i was getting about 100 zeal so that's about three spoils of war which is quite a lot <laughs> or it's also 100 renewals of experience at the uh the vendor nomad so technically it's around 2000 zeal per hour if you've got the five times multiplier and that's only if you're purely leeching so you'd have about a thousand per hour if you're trading wins with your friend and that's all. That's all I've got for you today. So if you enjoyed this short guide, remember to leave a sub, a like, or comment. You know, it does help me massively, so I would appreciate it. And yeah, I wish you the best of luck on getting your little creator pet. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your trailblazer. Peace.